Okay, today is April 23rd, and yesterday I went around collecting um, a few mushrooms that some may be confused with um, the birch polypore, and I'm going to show you the difference, because that's one of the most common questions I get asked when I'm talking about mushrooms and the birch polypore and the artist conch and, and the, the hoof tinder and, and a few other types of mushrooms and people don't know what the difference is or they want to know what the difference is and uh this is what i'm here to do today okay this right here is a birch polypore and this is basically how it attaches to the tree right here so you'll see it in a tree like this right here and typically it's like a it's kind of like this color only very very faint um, if you can picture a, um, a lightly roasted marshmallow, it's that color or your lemon meringue color before it starts getting dark. And the top is smooth. Underneath is filled with pores. And the pore is why it's called a polypore. Okay. And you can identify it by one, it only grows on birch, birch trees, and it's smooth on the outside. It's general shape. And here's another one right here. This one's dry. Um, it looks like a pancake. And that's a good way to remember what uh, polypore looks like, the birch polypore. And if you turn it over, you can see that it has this brown lip here all the way around. And the polypore sit inside. So that's pretty cool. Generally, this would be light colored probably about the color of this right here but this is I was I picked this last week so this has overwintered now if you take this okay let me just go ahead and show you it's rubbery and it's very difficult to cut when it's rubbery and you can see my cut lines I'm trying to cut through this one right here and this is dry this right here is rubbery but drying because it cracked right there and a little bit of an indent so you can see push it and see how wrinkly it gets if it was fresh it wouldn't do that but this is still edible the way it is and this right here has dried up and you can see that some of the moisture is gone or the moisture is gone so it left it kind of wrinkly and it's hard so you could actually break this in half and this has been kicking around in my mushroom bin waiting for it to dry so it's kind of choppy here but you can still see the same general ridge right here as you can here Okay, so setting these aside, and this is birch polypore, birch polypore. You can see the pores. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside for now. Okay, your birch polypore has a lot of the same medicinal qualities as your chaga, and they both grow on um, birch trees. Chaga is much better tasting than these. These tend to be quite bitter. When they're small probably the size of a quarter um you can take it off a tree and you can nibble on it and it'd be a little rubbery but it won't be bad it might be a little bitter but I've, in my experience that size and smaller the size of a quarter and smaller i don't have that bitterness um taste in the mouth but um i use the birch polypore as an anti-inflammatory because i have a bad back i have a bad knee i have a bad wrist i have <laughs> I'm just getting old and I've overused and abused my body over the years. So anti-inflammatories are good for my body. But um, birch polypore is an immune booster. It's an antiseptic. It's an antifungal. It is an antibacterial and is an anti-inflammatory, which I already mentioned before. So this mushroom boosts, um, boosts healing. And if you take... These, I'm going back to these for a second. And don't mind my fingernails. I've been digging in the mushrooms this morning already. But if you take these and cut it up, and before it's hardened, and you can soften this if you wanted to, um, by just adding water to it, putting it in water for a few minutes. And if you drape a piece of polypore, birch polypore, over your fingers or over your wound, um... It's going to slow and stop bleeding. And you can actually 
wrap it over your wound and then wrap it onto your wound so it stays there and act like more it acts like a band-aid it acts like um uh promotes healing it stops bleeding it's just it's really a good thing to know in the wild so other than um the use of that uh what i already said um the they have proven that, or they have shown that, digesting birch polypore in this form or even in a tea um, helps kills or rids parasites in the body. And that's not so much of an issue here in modern day, but it still happens. There's parasites all over the place and people are getting into a lot of trouble with parasites. But you take um, back in the caveman days or or even up the last few thousand years, and they had an issue with parasites. So I imagine this right here was a good thing to carry with them. Okay, another thing you can do is, other than um, all the things I mentioned before, you see these cut lines where I tried to cut it, and I had a sharp knife trying to cut these, and uh, it still left marks where my blade push through and what the earlier man did was when they sharpened their their blades or or whatever um they can get them sharp but to smooth out the the very very peak of the edge they would use this as a like you would a leather and i grew up um watching old people old men will finish off or keep their knife sharp by rubbing it across a sheet of leather. And that was pretty cool watching. I never understood it, but I understand it now as an adult. <laughs>